since this is an October episode, I got like my pumpkin. Your my... witchy stuff behind you. Do you remember these? I don't know if you are like. <gasps> oh my gosh, are those the chicken nuggets that you yes. would get? And they're like dressed up as little dinosaurs yes. and stuff. So Winston, <gasps> I remember those are awesome. Winston got them in their costumes, so they all mismatch. That's so cute. <laughs> so, that is so cute. And then I also have the um, like the these ones. Like the, I don't. Oh wait, did it clip on the front and the back? Yeah. <sighs> yes. Those are the best. That's amazing. Nineties vintage. I'm, um, I moved from my kitchen to my living room, um, so that when I uh work on my boring stuff tomorrow, I can watch my binge shows. Do you have binge shows? I do. So um, right now I am like, so I like a, sh like a sugar binge is what I kind of call it. Something that's like super light, like, light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when I'm just like, not, not wanting to pay much attention and like, I just need something light. So I'm not like all stressed out all the time. Sure. And right, right now I'm rewatching bones. <laughs> I, uh, I have one of those. That's not a very light show. Is it? Is that it, It's a murder show, but it's like, it's very cheesy. Um, and like what I really enjoy about bones, which I'm realizing in this like second watch is like, it's all women. Like the Jeffersonian is like almost all women scientists and stuff. There's like a couple of men here and there and like they have interns and stuff, but for the most part, the main focal points are the women, and that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and the first like super bad serial killer who like catches like um, who buries bones and like catches like Booth, the big strong man and like almost kills him is a woman. The first serial killer in that show is a woman? Yes. Oh, that's weird. Right. So um, I don't I, know. See, I've never watched, I've never watched that show. It's really, I mean, like it's, it's like a, it's a crime scene show, but it's really, yeah. it's really cheesy. And it's more about like, they're kind of like witty and yeah. And yeah. Like, the main character is so smart and very awkward because she just like tells the truth all the time and doesn't yeah. get. She's a Deschanel, you know, right? She is uh, Emily Deschanel. Yes. I, I'm also watching a like a female driven uh, show. I got into I'm late to the game, uh, but I got into um, Sabrina, the new the chilling adventures of Sabrina. I started that. I haven't gotten far in it, but I've started. oh my god. Okay, so that's basically what I did. I started it and then I could not stop it. <laughs> like so I I was like oh oh I'm in this now and I. I'm stuck and now I'm like halfway through season two and I'm like fuck <laughs> if we're talking about stuff like that oh hi Manchu how did you get in here um if we're talking about stuff like that then I'm watching oh god it was on my my baby sister um was all over my ass about it what is the name of it I started watching it's about these twin girl uh like headhunters it's just called Teenage Bounty Hunters. Oh, what is so that on? Netflix. And oh. It's like two teenage bounty hunter girls. And they're, I don't know, they, they go to like a Christian school and they end up becoming bounty hunters. And it's pretty. As you do. Yeah. And it, <laughs> but like essentially they like, they're in a, like a rich white school. And it's just like, they, they accidentally uh, get into an accident with their daddy's truck and end up having to find a way to pay for it. And so they become bounty hunters <laughs> and it's, it's actually really good. It's really witty. Um, like, I don't know. It's, it's really, really good. And it deals with like, I don't know, teenagers and sexuality and like a, in a, in a fun, like kind of healthy, more healthy way than what yeah. you're used to. Um, yeah. and, but it does talk like about, I don't know. It's, it, it was good. It's good. It's funny. Um, and then one of the big things that I'm watching right now, which I'm watching with Mike, um, is we are watching, uh, Lovecraft country. Oh my gosh. Okay. Don't tell me anything about it because we're going to start that. It's, it's like on our Halloween list. Oh, it's so good. It's so perfect for Halloween. Yeah. It's, I won't it's tell on our you, list. 
anything about it except for it's definitely a monster of the week type show, which I love monster of the week shows. And it's, um, kind of a twilighty type show. Yes. Okay. So, good. Because yeah. we, we, uh, love twilight and, um, we've watched the preview like 19,000 times for Lovecraft it's, country it's and really we, we've heard nothing but great things about the show. So I'm very excited. About Have you guys watched Bo- boys? No. Oh my God. That's on our list too. We watch that. It's that one can be very intense. I listen, I'm so far behind on things that I just started. Well, I just started and I'm just now ending uh, good omens and you know how much I love. <gasps> David so, Tennant. Yeah. Like I, so which by the way, do you listen to his podcast? No, I've been meaning to, Oh, I've heard God. it's really good. And it's, didn't he just have somebody on there that was really great? Dan Levy. That's it. Yes. Mm-hmm. I just listened to it today and it's so cute. Because they're both, I love them both so much. I want um, to, I, I need to listen to that. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I got right. super duper sidetracked. No, I just, it's okay. You know, I, those are all things that I wanted to talk to you about anyway. So, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so right now we have like the f- first vice president running mate that's a woman who I'm, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of her. Right. But whatever. It's still a p- pivotal thing. Oh, yeah. You know, but the biggest news story about her is how many times she's worn converses to public events. And I'm like, cool. That's what we're going with, huh? That's all all we pay attention to is what the woman's wearing. That's all that ever gets paid attention to is what the woman's wearing. Listen, I'm not one to be like, really, that's what we're going with, but all right. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, the internet is a, it's a shit show right now. I know. I just, I, I really can't. I did see something really cool though. Uh, Casey and I watch these cringe compilations, uh, like Reddit cringe compilations a lot. Um, And we ran across one. I don't know how recent it was, but I'm going to post it on our uh, Revolution Rosie's page because this newscaster was a boss. Oh my God. The way she handled things was so great. Um, So her name is Kay Burley, I believe is how you pronounce her last name, Uh, B-U-R-L-E-Y. She's from the UK and she is discussing um, Tony Abbott, um, who I don't know anything about the UK and their politics or any of that, okay? I know nothing about it Um, because they have a lot more going on than we do even. I mean, they have the monarchy and... Right, parliament and officials. And yeah. so it's like a whole other realm. Um, but either way, she's discussing this Tony Abbott character with this gentleman, Matt Hancock. And I'm going to post it because, listen, I don't know the whole rundown of the situation, but this Tony Abbott guy sounds like a real tool bag. And <laughs> he just sounds like a piece of work. And this this guy, um, Matt Hancock is defending this guy. And, uh, she's like, so he's like a homophobe. He hates women. He thinks that old people should just die from COVID. And you're like, but he's good at trades. So we should probably just let him run things. (laughs) And she's just like watching him stutter and like, yeah. Well, yeah. And she's like so steadfast and great. And I'm like, Casey was like, oh, you need to post this. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I love it. I love she's it. She's a love badass it, it. the whole time. Cause like, they're both like on the split screen, like how we are. And she was just like, and he's just like, oh no, that would make me feel good. I would very much enjoy it. I know. And I, I hope that she went home later and just was like masturbating <laughs> like to herself. Yeah. To herself. It was great. And I was like, I absolutely have to yes, please post bring that. this up because it please was it. so good. Um, so oh. I will post that and I will post the link. You know what else we should bring up? What? That's Vivian Vega. <laughs> that over there, which you can't see unless you're watching the YouTube, which we do have subscribers, by the way, That's is awesome. Betty LaRue. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and this is well, uh, Revolution Rosies, and welcome to uh, episode like three of. <laughs> so this episode is episode three. 
of season three? Yeah. yeah. But part one of episode, wait, uh, yeah, part, part one. one, episode, episode two, th- how are we no. doing it? I, I don't know. know how, I got myself so confused before that I just was like, you know what, this is uh, episode three and this is part one of women in culinary. There we go. That yeah. sounds perfect. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty excited. So yeah, I've been like, I, I don't know. I've been like, again, I listen to some news podcasts. I listen to NPR every day. Um, but I just really, I, I can't like, I can't get online to look things up. I just can't do it right now. Just cause like, it's bucking awful. It so. is. <laughs> so like, to, so you've to, been listening to things to do well, your research? Uh, no, no, no. I have like, I've looked at my people. I'm just saying like to find like news stories to talk about. Uh, I just can't get on like a news station and cause everything they're doing right now is complete. It's just, it's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I get the important stuff and uh, and I make sure not to dive too much into it. Cause if you dive into even the most important things that are happening, there's a bunch of shit. <clears throat> like, I hate that we can hear everyone's opinions all the time. No one yeah. fucking wanted that. No one needed no. that. Like, no, again, Facebook's off my phone. I go on to Instagram to scroll through pictures. I barely read anything on it. And then I go to Twitter every once in a while, just to make sure something crazy doesn't happen. Like yeah. Captain America sends out a picture of his dick or something. Yeah, was that accidental? I don't know. I haven't seen I don't know. it, but it is funny though because he was like, uh, "Well, since I've got everyone's attention, please vote." <laughs> and I was like, "That's great," and I've been following Matthew Lillard, which is a lot of fun. Oh, I love him. Mm-hmm. How's he doing? Think- he's doing really good. And I think he's doing something with some like D and D people right now. I don't know, but that sounds uh, right. Yeah. So, uh, (laughs) and then of course, like, you know, I follow some politicians and stuff. I mean, like, but yeah, so that's it. Like I, I really like, I, I check to make sure things haven't blown up that no one's murdered anyone that like things aren't. And then, and then I'm, and then I'm out. I'm like, you know what? I have a baby at home to take care of. I'll deal with that. Let's talk about culinary. Let's talk about culinary. Um, so I got into this like fun place doing this one. All right. So here's how I decided on my woman. I said, uh, I want to know who the first woman ever to get a Michelin star was. Mm. Okay. Tell us what a Michelin star is though. Do you know, can you explain what that is? Thank you for asking. Because I, I don't know what that is. So my first thing on here says, what is the Michelin star? <laughs> I was like, I, cause you know, you've heard of it, right? You've heard of it. I've, heard, I've getting, definitely heard of it heard and of I've seen it like at a fancy restaurant. Right. Okay. So <clears throat> around 1900 in France, there were only about 300 cars in the entirety of France, um, which didn't bode well for the manufacturers, the Michelin brothers. Who like are the, the tires? Like the tires. Exactly. So the Michelin brothers, uh, to help encourage long distance travel and create a need for a private vehicle came up with the best marketing idea ever, um, the Michelin guide. So they came out with this guide that, uh, had tips on how to care for your car, how to change your tire. And then like, like places of interest and destinations and restaurants throughout France. So they created this guide to create, create a need for people to drive cars places. And it worked. Smart. People loved the Michelin guide. Like it was, you know, it went over awesome. Um, and they, they, it's they like were, a concierge service basically. Well, it's like a, it's just like a guidebook, but yeah. it was like the first of its kind. They really didn't have, you know, like you didn't have up until then, even like restaurants and stuff, they weren't something you went to. You would go to a town and you'd be like, well, here's a place to eat. Right. But after the Michelin guide came out, there were destinations to go to and you could get yeah. there because you had a personal family car. Um, so yeah. they, they literally came up with it to sell their tires because there were only 300 cars, not enough cars to sell their tires to. It was brilliant. Smart. So, um, smart marketing, right? It was brilliant marketing. So they, uh, so they, they were free at first and then they took like a small break in printing during world war one. Um, and then they came back after, uh, eliminating advertising and starting, they started to charge for the Michelin guide. And then in 1926, they awarded their first stars. 
Um, these were given to restaurants they considered fine dining establishments. And by 1931, they had, had adopted the Michelin three-star rating. So the, not, like, the top stars you can get from Michelin is three. Um, so if you are a one-star Michelin restaurant, it means you are very, a very good restaurant in your category. So whatever your category is, you're a very good restaurant in your category. If you get two Michelin stars, you're, it's excellent cooking worth a detour. So like if you're heading that way and it's just like off the path, you should check it out. It's worth a detour. Mm -hmm. And then if it's a three-star Michelin restaurant, it's exceptional cuisine worth a special journey. So it's worth the journey in and of itself. So you're like, I'm going to Pittsburgh, but I should probably go all the way to New York City for this steak. Well, it's so <laughs> kind of, yeah. So it's kind of like, it's worth just being like, you know what, we're going to drive four hours to go eat this food. Right. And it's specifically just to go there. So it's it's worth the destination in, a, in, a, right. in and of itself. So okay. that is a Michelin star and how they work, which Love I it. didn't know. And I thought that I, was I also didn't. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, the next thing I want to talk about quickly uh, is Mers Leoneses. Leoneses. Mers Leoneses. Okay, this is all in French. Um, you so always gonna, do this to yourself. I do this to myself. Every time. <laughs> so Mereses Leoneses means mother of lion. Uh, lion spelled L-Y-O-N, which is a town in France. Okay? Okay. So mothers of lion. Um, so when you hear a woman referred to Ebe as the Maris, Mar, Maris, it, she's the mother and she's part of the mother of lions. And mother I, of lions. Maris. Maris. Leonesis. Yes. So they refer to a long lineage of female chefs beginning in the mid 1700s who brought culinary fame to lion, which is now France's food capital. Um, and I thought that this was really interesting because, you know, culinary skill is such a boys club and they always, it's always men, you know, they, they, you, yeah. you think of famous chefs and famous, you know, cooks and it's always men, but actually the most famous colony in the, or culinary skilled people in the world that come from France, they come from these group of women, these mothers of lion who to turn this, to turn Lyon, France into a culinary hotspot. Um, they went, they helped define and shaped French cuisine. They were mostly untrained domestic worker, workers in wealthy families' kitchens who left to start their own restaurants, especially during the, during the depression era. Wow. France, it, France owes its culinary spot in the universe to women. During, you said the depression era? It started in the 1700s and became very big, um, them leaving their spots because they were no longer, um, a lot of these women were untrained chef, untrained cooks mm -hmm. who were kitchens of these fancy houses. And then when the depression hit, like these people couldn't afford their servants anymore. And these women would go out and they would start their own restaurants. Wow. And that's where France. Well, cause they're like, I mean, I might as well use my skill. Right. You, I gotta I mean, use my skill. I gotta make money somehow. So right. I can open like if my family, if the family that I've been cooking for, for years and years and years can't afford me anymore, I'm just going to have to cook for everyone. Yeah. So, but yeah. So France owes its spot in the culinary world to women. That's awesome. Just so you know. So with that, with that all explained, we're going to talk today about La Mer Brasier. Um, who is Eugene Brazier, La Mer being the mother. One of she is one of the mothers of Lion. Okay. She was born June twelfth, eighteen ninety five, on a farm in Bourges and Bresse. I'm gonna butcher all of this. I'm so sorry. I know. Why do you always pick people with the toughest? Because I wanted to do the Michelin star <laughs> thing, and I got I am like really excited. Okay. So by the time she was five, she could make two pies, which were specialties of her mother. Um, her mother passed away when she was 10 years old uh, and Eugene was placed or Eugenie was placed with the family to work on their farm for room board and one new pair of clogs and one new dress every year. So that's what she did until she was 19 years old. She worked on farms 
Um, and at 19, she tarnished her family name by becoming un, an unwed mother and her father kicked her out of her, his home. So she began to work in Lyon for the family Milat as a domestic servant. First a maid, then a nanny, and then as the cook. Um, mm. So that's where she like really got her start. Um, and then, so she starts working for Mayor Filox. So another mother of Lyon, Filox, uh, or Filo, could be Filo, like La Rue. Filau. Yeah. It's spelled similar. F L F I L L O U X. So Filau. 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 Oh my God. I'm really sorry to anyone listening to this right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. I just did something. There we go. Um, so anyways, she started to work for her whose kitchen only employed women. Awesome. Uh, mind you, this was when she was like 20. So this would have been in like, uh, 19, like 1915, she would have been 20. So she was working in a restaurant that only employed women, um, which is where she learned to make what would become her signature dish, which is violet demi dieu, AKA polarde de brasa demi dieu or chicken in half morning. Uh, this is a dish with a uh, chicken whose uh, like skin has been stuffed with black truffles. Oh my. So you can see the black truffles through the skin. That is so French. Yeah. Which is why it's <laughs> called like in half morning because you can see like black truffles through the skin of this, this, um, this chicken, yeah, and the chicken that you use to make this dish must come from uh, Brasse, which is where they're at now. So, uh, so she became. This is one of the dishes that uh, that Eugenie became known for. This was like her signature dish, and she learned it from Mayor Filax. Um, Mayor Filax or Philo, Philo, I think it's Philo. I'm going to go with Philo. I'm going to be wrong on all of this. Uh, Somebody can tell us. Yeah, please do. Feel free. I'm sorry. Um, So Mir Philo was said to have shown much jealousy over Eugenie and Eugenie complained often about her treatment of her. Um, There are stories where Eugenie prepared the staff meal of rabbit. So, and I used to work for, um, the Capital Club. You, you, you worked mm-hmm. for the Capital Club. I did too. You remember mm-hmm. how they used to serve staff meals yeah. every day? Yeah. Okay, so that's not typical in restaurants. And uh, I realized in doing this research, like the Capital Club to begin with was very French inspired, which is why they had like Le Bistro and mm. all of that. Um, and even serving the meal that the, the, the staff meal every day was kind of part of that, which is also, which I don't think you guys were doming as much when you started, but we did like the doming of the meals. We used to go and when you did dinners and you would have like the glass dome. We did for like events and things. Yeah. But... Like special, special times yeah. and stuff. So, and it makes sense to me now. I'm like, oh, because it was a French style restaurant. So they had yeah. the staff meals, which is something that they typically do in France. So anyways, Eugenie. Those darn French. They being so all French. fancy. I think that, I mean, like, I don't know. You have food. Feed your people. Right. You like, feed your staff. Let it's them fine. eat cake. Let them eat cake. Anyway. Right. Wasn't that their thing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it was, but it was, you know, it was, but it wasn't. Um, so (laughs) anyways, so she made the, so Eugenie made the staff meal one day. Um, and typically, typically that was Mayor Fialaux's job. And, uh, the staff was like, Oh, the rabbit that you made is better than hers. And that was like one of the stories. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I said, but what probably set Fialaux off her jealousy, like off the chart was when Eugenie started working at Brasserie du Dragon during the month, like uh, Mir Philos would close up her restaurant for like a month. And during that month, Eugenie would go work for du Dragon. 
And, um, and then she finally moved into a full-time position into to do dragon and um, diners started asking Bilal if she had opened a new restaurant. Cause she was probably using, but also the cooking because she had been cooking at Fuel House for oh, so long yeah, and like yeah, the yeah. cooking was so similar and so good. So they thought that she'd open another restaurant. Oh yeah. Um, and Fuel Out would tell people that Eugenie was only a dishwasher at her restaurant, not worthy to cook. Um, yeah. And then oh, I said, she was also probably pretty pissed that Eugenie's signature dish became the chicken in half morning since it was a dish that she had taught her for her restaurant. Right. And then Eugenie was like, well, I'm just going to perfect through this and everyone's going to know me for it. Is that cool? Um, <laughs> Eugenie. Uh, Eugenie. Come um, on, girl. So, uh, in 1921, she opened her first restaurant in at 12 Rue Royal um, on a shoestring budget. She could only afford chairs two at a time, borrowing from establishments in the area when she ran out. She purchased shrimp for her menu from Do Dragon with the understanding that she could sell them back their own shrimp at the end of the night if she didn't use it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, her boyfriend and her did all the laundering, busing, dishwashing, cleaning. They did all of that themselves because they didn't have any money. Um, and then once when she was washing her tablecloths in a fountain at a local and like in a local area, she was washing the tablecloths for the restaurant in the fountain, um, a baker dropped off an, like a, a delivery of chairs to her restaurant. And when she asked him about it, he was like, I don't want payment for it. I'm just tired of seeing people just stand around your restaurant. <laughs> so he just like dropped off It was off that chairs. popular that people was, were just, just standing People were just standing around. around and there were no chairs. Wow. Um, yeah. So, uh, so she, so like she was hired to do this cold buffet for Spirdo, which is a horse, an annual horse race in France. Um, and the director was so impressed by her food, uh, that she was brought back every year, which like furthered her reputation and made her name bigger. Cause it was this big like horse race. So a lot of people from around the, like around places would, would come, um, and so she was known for being a very, very picky about the quality of her ingredients, the cleanliness of the restaurant, and never wasting food. Like she did not waste food. Um, she made the staff meals out of trimmings from like what was going to be meals, so like trimmings and stuff. Uh, so she, that's how she made the staff meal. And she even uh, saved diners leftovers to feed the pigs. So like, all right, I like, I'm on I mean, board yeah. with that. Like yeah. I'm totally on board with that. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. It's like a full circle. I mean, when you grow up not having much. And she grew up with you know, nothing. And then you like, yeah, you're going to make use of what you have. It's, exactly. And this is like the twenties. Yeah. Like, of course, the, were the twenties like our twenties there? <laughs> no, like, did they have the same twenties that we had there? Are you saying like it's her twenties? No, like our like how our twenties oh, like the was like, the, like yeah, like, like the Great and Depression then it, and it got into the depression towards the end. Yeah, of the like was yeah. their twenties so like they that did there? Up, yeah, okay, yeah. it did it did end up affecting them there? Okay, because um, they do. I wasn't, I wasn't sure because yeah. like they do talk that about okay. that a little bit. Okay, um, or, or something something was talked about. Where, I mean, I watch Peaky Blinders, but that's not in France. Yeah. Um, I feel like the great depression was everywhere, but maybe it didn't hit everywhere as hard, but I yeah. think it was everywhere. I mean, I know um, there was like trading and stuff, but I wasn't yeah. sure how far it went, you know? Yeah. So, um, so in 1932, she opened her second restaurant. So she opened two restaurants. Dang. Uh, yes. The second restaurant she opened in Le Col de la Lare, uh, which was West of Lyon. The building had no gas, no running water, no electricity when she bought it. Well, yeah. that's not going to do much. It got you two know. Michelin stars that year. What the heck? How? Did and she, was she, she cooking it out of trash can? And she, was the, and she was the first woman to ever be awarded a Michelin star. And she got two? She got two at this restaurant. That so it's worth a detour. It, it is worth a detour and it doesn't have electricity or running water. So 
pretty awesome. I mean, like this is in the thirties, this was 32, but still no electricity or running water is pretty intense for a, for restaurant. a restaurant. Yeah. To be worth the detour. Yeah. Um, so, and then, so 1932, she gets the two stars for that restaurant. And then in 1933, both restaurants received three Michelin stars. Wow. She was the first person ever to receive dual, dual three stars. So she was the first person ever to get two restaurants that had three stars. Is that, um, is three stars the most you can get now too? Yeah, it's the most you can get now too. So, okay. That's amazing. Not only, not only was she the first person, not woman, person to get dual, like three stars, she held that record for 64 years. Holy until moly. Alain Ducasse received two for his two restaurants or three for his two restaurants in 1997. That's so from, pretty remarkable. That is hella remarkable. And it's insane that she's been erased as one of the most, like, the top chefs in, Amer- in, in, in French history. I've and, never in my life heard of yeah. her. So, uh, so that, yeah. So that's like her, like, she, first of all, she was the first woman to get a Michelin star. She got two. And then second of all, she was the first person ever to get a Michelin star for, that's or to get do, like three, to hold three at two restaurants at the same for time. S- over 60 years. For like- 64 years. Um, so, and then it was, also 50 years before another woman was awarded a Michelin star. Just any, any, any variety, any Michelin variety star of star took 50 years for another woman to get a Michelin star. Um, that's so crazy. During world war two, she was fined multiple times and even prison imprisoned, which I read was uh, like, she was in prison for like a week for breaking ration laws. <laughs> She was like, I don't care. I'm going to cook food. So I'm going to take all the food I need to cook. And so she got in prison for it, which I'm like, I don't really stand with that. But at the same time, you go, you rule breaker, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, and then she needed to keep up that three star rating. I, suppose. I know. Right. Uh, and then Paul Bucuse, Paul Bucuse was her apprentice. Uh, which might not mean anything to you. It didn't mean much to me, but he is one of the most well-known chefs ever. So anyone out there that like is a culinary person would probably All know right. him. Um, he was her apprentice. Uh, and actually like it talks about how the mothers of lion were um, huge, like they 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 apprenticed so many of these chefs that all of french culinary essentially comes from them they birthed birthed (laughs) french culinary (laughs) just saying they they pumped it out their bad holes yes they did um (laughs) and then uh she retired in 1972 and died march 2nd of 1977 so in the seven she 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 was here for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and and worked up until five years before she died. Dang. She was a Google Doodle on June 12th, 2018 to celebrate her 123rd birthday. So she was a Google do- Doodle. Google Doodle. Google Doodle. Um, as of 2001, the Rue Royale restaurant was being run by Brazier's granddaughter. So it, up until 2001, it was in the family name still. And as of 2020, the Lion Restaurant was in operation under the ownership Matteo Vianney, who bought it in 2008, Um, but the restaurant in Lear no no longer exists. But you can still go and eat her original Lion Restaurant. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. It's still in operation as of 2020. So I don't know what's going on right now. Who knows? Uh, hopefully, hopefully, such like an important part of history still stands. And is so the original places. one, the OG, the that OG she bought in like nineteen. What was it? 20, 30, 20, 30? Her first restaurant was. Blah, 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 I'm sorry. Twenty one. Twenty one. Okay, so I thought hundred was... years. She's okay. You and I can find a way to get there in two thousand and twenty one. We can go eat at a hundred year old restaurant. If that country will let us in. <laughs> it probably won't. Nobody wants us. <laughs> no, but I don't blame them. No, I, I don't do really. not blame I them. I don't either. 
Um, so yeah. I don't either. <laughs> so that, That's remarkable. That, that is, is the remarkable. story of uh, Mayor, or La Mer Brazier. Eugene, Eugenie? Eugenie. Uh, and that was, I mean, like for me, that was a lot of fun because not only did I get to learn about Michelin stars. Yeah. That was a really cool trivia fact that I- Totally. I'm not going to lie. I have wondered if Michelin tires and Michelin stars were related in a, in a, ma- in a matter that I was like, no fucking way. But because like, what's the correlation? Where's the correlation between Michelin tires and Michelin stars? There is one. And there is. Like the tire company- Michelin wanted you know, to sell what tires. my baby looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. that that giant marshmallowy man. That reminds me. I was known for the best culinary like um last so. question though. Um now that your story's ended, do you have a woman to shout out? You know what was a wonderful surprise? Let me just put this out there. Okay. And she my woman. I don't know if I've talked about her before. I'm going to go ahead and just like make her my woman for today because I had a wonderful surprise to do today. Okay. Um, I'm at work and I get a phone call on my cell phone and I answer it and I was like, hey, and I didn't recognize the number. I guess I don't have it saved. I don't know why I wouldn't have it saved, but Brianne is like, oh, this is that Betty and not Dan's Betty, <laughs> which her her new husband who just got yes, married they just got married they just got I married don't think you have talked about her i don't think i have either but she's a wonderful person uh yes. and so she accidentally called me today but then we spent like 30 minutes on the phone just catching up which was just like a wonderful surprise yes I mean, like she asked me about you know how everything was going i talked to her and she she just had a pandemic wedding Yes. Um, they are selling off as much of their stuff as possible and moving to California. Yes. Which is just like insane, but so good. And so her, she, Mm -hmm. I, I really love, um, she really gets into certain things for a while and then she can just let them go. Yes. And then she, she's, she's like, I've done this. I've experienced it. I enjoyed it. And And I'm letting it go. And then I'm going to find something else. And I, I really admire that about her. I think that's a really cool, um, I, I obsess over things for years and years and years and never feel like I master (laughs) it. And I, you know, like, I love the fact that she can be like, I want to do this thing. I want to get good at it. She does get good at it. Yep. She's a very, very talented human being. All of, oh, like I modeled for one of her hair shows, which was Mm -hmm. super amazing. And Mm -hmm. like, and she's a great model too. She's a stunning model. She does like her burlesque was beautiful. Her costume. Mm-hmm. And she, she did like two times and she was like, okay, I'm done. And that was like, good. That was fun. And then she would have these like gorgeous dripping and diamonds costumes. And I know. Was, and she was just like, all right. And I was like, what? No, you keep going. <laughs> You're making it so bad and you are just going to stop. <laughs> I know. And, but the, the, and then she did like nerd lesque and she did an amazing job putting that together. I know. And it was just like, I, know. I don't know. It, and then I really her plants, the, uh, her plants, her, she's, she's got such a love for plants. I wish she I always would want to that, give them away when she moves. I would house like, them. I have a couple of them? <laughs> I've been, so I don't, I, maybe this is a quarantine thing that people aren't talking about. Like they're talking about bread and stuff, but plants, man. Oh my God. Plants. Listen, they're everywhere in my house. I have so many. And Casey, every saw, time. I've got, Every time I go outside, there's like more outside. I have like two new mums. He's like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> and I'm like, where are they coming from? No, I like, I, so, you know, we have that beautiful, I, my yard oh, is like a topiary garden right now. It is. It's, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. But then I've started bringing them in the house. I've got like, I've got like an aloe plant and like this one plant that was brought to me, um, by my cousin-in-law, Julie, that was like, it's a friendship plant, plant, plant. I want to look it up and see what it's actually called. Mm. Um, but I've got that and I've got the one that's in the bathroom, but I also have this one, um, that my sister gave me and it's a wandering Jew. Oh, yes. Yes. And Mike was like, can we name that one something? Like, can it be like Wandering John or something? Because he's they so do call it something else. There's but... yes, there's because um, it's it's like because I had to look it up because I literally was like, I don't know what it's called other than Wandering Jew. And I know that that makes you uncomfortable for me to keep saying. <laughs> so um, it's a purple heart. And it also has this like plant name, like texture, definition, but like really long plant name. Oh, yes. Um, as, okay. as you do. But it's also called a walking Jew. 
Um, which my sister said, maybe he'll like that better because it sounds less confused. <laughs> <laughs> sounds less confused it sounds less confused so i don't know maybe on top of like everyone in their like doughs and breads and stuff i also feel like people have really been getting into like gardening and planting yes which, like if you can, if, if you don't want to go to the grocery store gardening is a great option <laughs> it definitely is I, i'm telling you we inherited plants from our neighbors who just let them go so you know brianne if you're listening to this episode where we shout you out and you need a home for your plants, I'm like Girl, a foster mother to plants. By the time she hears this episode, she's going to be gone. Oh, she's going to be gone. They are, they're leaving like right now. Yeah, you're right. It's crazy. Damn. She probably yeah. already found a mom for her plants. Probably. I'm sorry. But no, she's a, a, a wonderful doll and she... Uh, it was really great. It was like a really happy surprise today that she just called me yeah. and we were just like, well, Hey, while we're here, let's have a little conversation and see how each other's doing. That's awesome. So, yeah. That, that is really, awesome. Really nice. Yeah. So oh, good. Yeah. <sighs> oh, that's the end of the podcast. Yawn. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm how we end now. things now. Yeah. We that's how we yawn. end things now. Be like, oh boy, well, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, I have a I have a five month old who is trying her damnedest to refuse to sleep in her own bed and gnaws on me at night to the point where I literally have little like bite marks all over my boobs. It's teething time, huh? Yep. And my oh, husband yeah. I was like, our daughter bites me in the night. He's like, I told you she's a vampire. Energy sucker and she is, she is yeah, a little vampire. All right. Well, All right. that was um, very educational and very delightful, and it made me hungry. So, um, would you like truffles? Are like a French thing, right? Yeah. Would you like some truffle shove chicken? Uh, I don't. Truffles are. Do you like truffles? I do, but I, I feel truffle. like inside of a chicken skin sounds not great. It sounds a little intense. Um, <laughs> Maybe maybe try some truffle potato chips because you can get those really easy. That yes, that, they are delicious. I'm all about it. I eat them until my breath is stinky. I will I will eat those until my mouth falls off of my face. They're so good. I, I don't know <laughs> that I've ever had that those. Really, they're really good. You can find there's like a truffle rosemary um, <gasps> potato chip. It's from this like really fancy brand that comes in black bags. Oh my God. Where do you what, find those? What is the name of the brand? It's like Terra, Terracotta. Terra, Terra. Yes. I think you're right. I'm pretty sure it's that brand. They have a, oh God, like a yes. rosemary trouble one. Cause they so make beet chips too. Oh my God. Yes. And they're delicious. Okay. I'm going to find them. All right. Okay. Well, until next time. Smear lipstick. And raise hell. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Wish you. I'll put this in the drop.